da, da, da. Da, da, da. You may object to the width, you know, oh my gosh, that's so much greater than three eighths of an inch typical mortar joint because we have the thickness of the angle. We have the, the compressible material to allow for expansion. We've got a lot going on there. And um, so we've seen some architects get creative and try to use a lipped brick. If you insist on, first of all, I'll tell you, it's not that big of a deal. This is 30 feet up in the air. If the, uh, if the, if the width of that joint is five eighths or three quarters or something like that, instead of three eighths, it's probably not going to uh, be noticeable because it's so far away from your eye. But if it is a visible, you know, a highly visible area, you can you can do this. It's not, you know, it's a little bit of a trade off. It's it's expensive to get these lipped brick fa fabricated and they often break during shipment and things like that. And sometimes they're not even the exact same color because they're manufactured at a different time. But if you do use a lipped brick, it's better to use the lipped brick below the shelf angle versus above the shelf angle, which I'll show you in a moment. Here you see the flashing just comes over and out. There's nothing special that has to happen with the flashing when the lipped brick is used below the angle. Unlike the lipped brick above the angle, where the flashing has to make a few additional bends and turns to accommodate all those changes of direction. 